parallelograms. What are they? Why are they? All of that. Well, at least what are they? That's what we're talking about today. So let's dive in and do it. So what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a quadrilateral. What was a quadrilateral? We had that in the last video. You think about it while I try to spell it. Quadrilateral. With an I, yeah, right. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Quad Quadrilateral. All right, did you figure out what a quadrilateral was? Well, did you? It's a four-sided figure, right? So, quadrilateral with two sets. Two sets of parallel sides. Parallel sides. Beautiful, right? Okay, so this is an example. Remember, these are symbols for qu for quadrilateral. These are symbols for parallel lines. So these two lines are parallel and these two lines are parallel. It has to have two sets of parallel sides to be a quadrilateral. You can have a shape, something like this, with just one set of parallel sides, which is a trapezoid. We'll talk about that later, right? For now... Something specifically having two sets of parallel sides. So really quickly, I would, I'm would i going to kind of give you how I'm going to do abbreviations in this particular lesson. There's a couple of them. So I'm going to abbreviate often. I'm going to abbreviate quadrilateral with just a quad when I'm writing. I'll say it quadrilateral outside. And then a parallelogram, I'm going to abbreviate that using parallel line abbreviation and O-gram. All right, so that's it. Let's talk about a few theorems related to parallelograms. We're going to talk about six theorems. We're going to do an example, and then that's it. Okay, so first four <coughs> properties of parallelograms. These are all theorems. Every one of these is a theorem, and then we're going to do two more. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So this is this shape is a parallelogram. We know it is because it's quadrilateral. It's got four sides. And because this is lab these are labeled parallel, it's parallelogram. And because it's parallelogram, because of this theorem, its opposite sides are congruent, right? That's not a part of the definition of parallelogram. So if you're on a proof or something and you're saying that <coughs> the opposite sides are parallel, that's not definition of parallelogram. It is, if it's parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent, which is a separate theorem, right? So the next one is, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent, which is really great, really helpful, right? This one takes a little bit more writing, but it's, pretty nearly as simple now both of <coughs> this one this one here and this one here are you could pro you probably could have figured these out based on your uh, theorems related to parallel lines right we've got well not this one but this one you can right because this would be like same side interior same side interior or supplementary so the third uh, theorem related to parallelograms is that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive or same side angles are supplementary. So x plus y is 180. Now this is actually true. This is kind of cool. I like this. I like this particular diagram because it works this way. So these this x plus this y equals 180. Also works this way. X plus y equals 180, which is true because both sets of opposite sides are parallel so it works in either direction if the shape is a parallelogram that's awesome this one is also kind of fun and kind of awesome this one would be particularly useful for proofs if we got right angles in there if a parallelogram has one right angle then it has four right angles so that is <coughs> is useful now that one actually is useful you know when you're trying to think in you know as far as real life terms this would be a useful thing if you were trying to build a perfect rectangle in real life in a construction and setting, a metalworking or a woodworking setting. If you have 
four sides that are the same length because of this guy. It would be the converse of this guy. But still, if we have four pieces that are the same length and we get them tied together and we, and we keep them parallel, then if you can push one right angle, then they'll all be right angles. So that's a good way to square up a real life shape, which is which makes it fun. This is also really useful for proofs in geometry. So we have two more with the diagonals of a parallelogram. So diagonals of the parallelogram. Look at this. This is this is cute. Look at look look at it. Look at it. Just look at it. I split. I had two things, and I, it was diagonal, so I I split it in diagonal. Cute, right? <laughs> or something. All right. There are two theorems having to do with the diagonals of tri. The diagonals of parallelograms, which do make triangles, right? If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, comma, <laughs> then its diagonals bisect each other. That's really useful. What does bisect mean? It means it cuts it in half, which means like if we're talking about a proof or something, that this is congruent to that and this is congruent to that, right? So the diagonals bisect each other. Also, the converse, where I think, uh, if I remember right, I think we're going to get this in later lesson as well like proving that triangles i think it's the next lesson actually where we can prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram by the converse of these the converse of this will also be true so if a quadrilateral's diagonals bisect each other then it's a parallelogram so that's also going to be true that's foreshadowing for the future last theory before we hit our example we're only six minutes 40 seconds in Doing all right. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then each diagonal separates the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So this is a kind of a picture example of that. Triangle ABD, this one right here, would be congruent to triangle CBD, right? So it splits it into, this would also, by the way, work if you split it this way, right? So if we did this direction, it would split this triangle. This triangle would be congruent to that triangle, right? So it works either direction because both side, opposite sides are parallel and congruent. We just learned that too. Let's do an example. If QRST is a parallelogram, we're going to find the value of each variable. So we've got several different things going on here. We'll do them in numerical order. Why not? So we've got X. Well, this is a quadrilateral. This has to do with sides. So we would go back. Now, this is muy importante. I was talking about this in class today, earlier today in geometry class. And when you are trying to think what to do on a problem like this, you need to go back and look at what theorems have to do with that thing. So this, this since X lives on a side, which theorem relates to sides, right? So we're going to be talking about this one right here. Whoop. I know, I know, I can't. It's fine. All right, we're going to be talking about this one right here, right? Because this is the one that deals with sides, right? So you got to be able to kind of put A with B and I put things that match together. And that's, that's the kind of things that you need to be thinking, right? So for this, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So this is like the easiest, peasiest thing ever, right? So for X, all we would do, I'm going to kind of start doing some colors here. So 5x equals 27, right? So to solve for x, you just divide both sides by 5. So x ends up equaling 27 fifths. That's fine. Not a problem. That was easy. Let's do y. All right, we got diagonals. So again, go back, think, what theorems do I know that have to do with the diagonals? Oops, wrong one. This one, right? So, oops, <laughs> wrong one again. So it could be this, where it's splitting triangles up in congruent into congruent tri or splitting the quadrilateral up into congruent triangles. But it's more likely it's going to be this one, where is because we've got two halves of a a parallelograms diagonals. They bisect each other, which means that TP is congruent to PR, which means that 2Y minus 5 equals Y plus 4. So let's take and write that equation. That's not hard at all. 2Y minus 5 
equals y plus 4. Let's solve for y. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. And let's go ahead and subtract the y from both sides as well. So this cancels and that cancels, leaving us with 2y equals 9. No, it doesn't. 2y minus y isn't 2y. How about y? I thought about that a minute ago. I thought it looked like this was super easy, and it is. y equals 9. <gasps> wow. Let's figure out the last one. So the last one, we've got this guy, all right? This z, this z here, right? So now we're talking about angles, right? So we're going to go back to this stuff. So we could be talking about this one where opposite angles are congruent, right? So we'll have to see if they're opposite. Or we could be saying that they're supplementary, right? So let's see if we can figure out what we're doing. Right. Now, oh, we've also got diagonals. <gasps> What's happening? Oh, wait. We've got to go way back, right? We've got to go way. We can go even further back, right? This QR is... This QR, these two are parallel, right? We know that because it's a parallelogram, right? Which makes this one, wow, that was effective. This one, <laughs> good enough. That one, it's a transversal, cutting a parallelogram, right? Too many words, something. I need to eat some dinner. <laughs> two Parallel lines cut by a transversal. That makes this one and this one opposite alternate interior angles. What are alternate interior angles? Congruent. So that means this one is congruent to that one. So 3z equals 33. That's easy to solve, right? We're just going to divide both sides by 3. Z equals 11. That's nice. Great. Y'all have a good day. If you're in my class, I'll see you in class. Do your homework for Pete's sakes. Don't be afraid of proofs. You can do it. If you're not one of my students, thanks for joining me. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Drop a like. Give me a comment. Subscribe. All those things. It's great, great stuff. I, I like being able to provide this these lecture videos for free to all of you people out there. We'll see you later.